friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a bathroom makeover, but I also have a DIY. I'm going to be doing a brand new window project that y'all are not gonna wanna miss out on. Before we hop into today's video, I do wanna say thank you to today's sponsor, Mantis Sleep. They have sent me over one of their sleep masks and I am really excited to show you a little bit more about it. My bathroom is currently a blank slate, so let's do a little bit of work in here first. I knew I wanted to do some shelving in here, but some of the shelves I had, they just, you know, weren't working in the space. And then I had an idea. Y'all wanted some new window projects. I had extra windows in storage, so I busted the glass out of a couple of these and started digging through my wood pile. In the end, I decided to use pieces of old pallet wood and fence boards. I'm going to be cutting some corbel-like shapes and using the pallet wood as my ledge. First step was to measure the length of the window and measure out my pallet wood. I will cut it with my miter saw. Next, I'm measuring how tall I want the corbel supports to be. I decided on 10 inches. I wanted them to be substantial. Now, I started by measuring out this pallet wood, 10 inch pieces. It was way too thick to cut with my jigsaw. I was having a hard time. So I ended up grabbing some pine, actually cedar fence boards from my stash and it was way easier to cut. Here I am drawing a corbel shape onto those cedar fence boards. I cut out one and then used it as a stencil to make my other three shapes. Cut all of those out with my jigsaw and then I actually decided to use two of each. I liked how they were each different and made different looks on the windows. I did sand those down with some 220 grit sandpaper to bring out some more of the natural wood colors and help them blend in with the palette wood a little bit better. If y'all are makers, I highly recommend making a few of these. It is super easy. First step, I took my drill and I drilled pilot holes down through the back of my window. I also drilled pilot holes into my shelf side. That way the wood screws would have a nice easy place to screw in. I supported the window up on this wooden crate to lift it up a little bit and then using wood screws I screwed down through each of my pilot holes into my shelf. I did one on each side of the window and one right in the middle. Now I've grabbed some wood glue and I'm gluing the edges of my corbel pieces I cut, putting them in place and drilling through the back of the window into the corbel. I did two screws on the back of the corbel and then once I got both of those on I flipped it over and drilled down through the shelf into the corbel making sure everything was going to be nice and stable and secure. And y'all, it was easy as that. Look how cute this is. So now I'm just holding it against the wall and trying to find the position. I'm gonna show you the trick I use to mark my holes on the wall. But first, let's check out the sleep mask. All right, let's peek at this sleep mask. So here is the one that I have been wearing. I have another one. Where'd the second one go? Hold please. Oh, there it is. <laughs> This is the one I've been wearing and I have a second one I'm gonna do a fun giveaway. So be on the lookout for that. I think I'll be doing a Facebook giveaway this time. So if you're not following me over there, be sure to do so. Link is down in the description box below. Um, but here is the sleep mask. So it is a really nice, soft fabric. Let's read the professional words. A super soft, breathable fabric for an unmatched comfort in any position. 100% um, blackout, which I can vouch for that. You cannot see anything. Zero eye pressure. So this is what I really loved. Because the eye pieces have these cups, there's no pressure like on your actual eyelid. It sits around the eye. It always makes me feel claustrophobic in a sleep mask if they're pressing against my eyelid. So 
not not a fan of that. Um, and it says gentle snag free fasteners won't grab your hair. Um, I hadn't really thought about that, but it hasn't so far. So here's what it looks like when it's on. It's big, um, but I have napped in this too, and it doesn't take my eyebrows off. So that's good. But again, completely blackout. Now they also sent me an accessory. These are the Max Eye Cups. Um, they're extra deep and wide for more eye space. No eye pressure on these as well. Tapered soft foam. Um, and then they just have the little Velcro on there so you can switch them out. And it tells you which side goes towards the nose. Easy peasy. They come with a cute little travel bag and then Inside the tiny pocket, they provided you with some earplugs as well. So cute little travel pack. Again, thanks Mantis Leap for sponsoring today's video. I did not even know that I needed an eye mask, um, but I can tell you it has helped with my sleep over the past couple of nights because it's been kind of rough the past couple of weeks. So again, stay tuned. I will um, make an announcement about this giveaway coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Here is my trick for measuring out where I need to drill my holes in the wall. So I take a piece of painter's tape and line it up on the back of the shelf. I attached D-rings to the shelf for extra stability, making sure it'll hold. Now I've put the tape up on the wall. I'm measuring each side to make sure I've got it centered. I make a couple little adjustments and then I measure down from the ceiling to make sure my holes are even. You could also use a level and put it on your top of your tape line to make sure it was level. Now that I've got it in the right place, I'm drilling a hole exactly where I made my little Sharpie mark where my D-rings are. So now it's perfectly spaced, it's perfectly level, and the tape holds all of my marks in place. So drilling a hole in the wall, and then I am tapping in my plastic anchors, and then I will take my screws and screw the screws into the anchors. That will give me a nice strong hold since I'm not drilling straight into any studs here. Now I'm using a little bit of my DIY decrepit dust. It's a powder dust form. I just put it along the fresh cuts of these corbel shapes that I cut to help them blend in with the rest of the aged wood. I put together a quick little stick and poke wreath with these beautiful tulips and went through my jar stash, yes I know it's a lot, to find the perfect jars to accent the top of my shelf. Now I think the wreath could be just a little bit bigger. This works for now, but I'm going to be on the lookout at the thrift store for one that's just a touch bigger to fill the window form a bit more. What do y'all think so far of this window shelving unit? I am loving the farmhouse vibes it's giving off. If y'all are new here and you're not sure where to find my flips, I have them all listed on my site, upcycledbybrie.com. I'll be sure to link everything down below for you as well. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying today's DIY. And if you don't mind, share this video out with a friend. That will help my channel continue to grow. If y'all are really digging this look and would like something similar in your home, I have listed the other window shelf and I've got a couple of more tins that I'm going to paint up the same way. Everything is on my site, upcycledbybrie.com. All right, y'all, I went thrifting this morning for the week, but I wanted to look for a couple things to go on either side of my ceiling tin. And I found these two matching tins. I don't love the color, so we're gonna paint them up a little bit. I've got some DIY prairie gray here and then probably a little bit of white wax. Three fifty dollars each I paid for these. They were originally uh, $14, probably from the Hobby Lobby. To cling on R14, it's a nice small brush. It'll work through these little details. And I'm putting one 
nice thick coat of DIY Prairie Gray across these whole metal tins. I was careful not to get too much paint built up around the detail, that way I don't lose that amazing tin imprint. Since DIY paint is water soluble until it's sealed, I can take a wet rag and rub off a little bit of the paint on top of those details. It's called wet distressing. It's way easier than sanding, especially on metal, and you can do it inside. Now I've got DIY White Swan, and I watered this down a ton in a cup, and I'm doing a paint wash over the top of these tins. I work back and forth between doing a little bit of paint and drying it with my heat gun, so I can see exactly what kind of effect I'm getting. Then at the end here, I take a little bit of that paint wash and puddle it up and use my heat gun to blow it around and really give it that beautiful drippy effect. Here is the final look of those two colors, but look how beautiful the depth is just using those two colors by adding a little bit of water to this paint. All right, here's a reminder what the bathroom looked like before I got started on my project. Now let's take a peek at the bathroom after I have everything decorated. Now y'all drop a comment, let me know which project is your favorite, the window shelf or the painted ceiling tins. And let me know, are you going to try to recreate the shelf or this paint finish yourself? All right, y'all, I hope you had fun doing a little bathroom decorating and DIYing today. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, send it to a friend that's gonna help my channel grow. And if you haven't, be sure to subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the window shelf and are you going to be making some of your own. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends. Also, noted, I got an amazing sticker. Proudly pro nap. Yes, I am. Hey, that thing is nasty. Go get that baby. That one's gross. So much clapping today.